Welcome to part two of Rucksters Rocks Japan. I'm sure you're wondering who the winners are, so let's dive into it. From the beginning, I wanted ZoomerCon to consist of the whole shebang, giving everyone an opportunity to showcase their bikes, to have a nice ride, a raffle with some very nice prizes, and of course, an awards ceremony, which was the finale of the event. I brought with me three acrylic awards, Best Zoomer for Moto Champ's Choice, People's Choice, and Ruxer's Choice. Obviously, I was the one picking out the Ruxer's Choice winner. Let me tell you, it was not easy. There were too many choices and I was having a hard time deciding. I was like, ooh baby. I had to man up and go with my gut instinct. My choice was not the prettiest bike, not the most custom bike, not the fastest bike or most outrageous bike. Nope, the bike I chose is the one I want as my daily rider. It was clean and minimal, done with style and taste. Owner Junuchi Sato got to go home with the Ruxer's Choice Award. I'm sure he was a happy camper. <laughs> Moto Champ's Choice winner had a very stylish bike. It was a blend of JDM and USDM ideas. The lucky winner got to go home with two awards since Motochamp brought their own trophy to present. People's Choice winner was called The Answer. It was the answer to what is happening now with the Zoomer Zine in Japan. 90% of the parts on this bike were USDM and the people ate it up. Of course, every great event comes with a proper speech. My team of translators worked their magic and Yuka Ozawa was kind enough to be my speaker. It was a moment to remember forever. The smile on everyone's faces, their laughter, the vibe in the air was positive and full of joy. What a day. Rucksters Rocks Japan, ZoomerCon 2013. The following Tuesday after the big show, we decided to visit Mount Fuji and enjoy the scenic view. Mount Fuji is Japan's highest mountain and it is 12,388 feet. We're about to take the gondola up to see Mount Fuji. Taking the gondola to the Vista Point was fun. The visuals reminded me of Lake Tahoe. The origin of Fuji's name is disputed. Some say it derives from the Ainu language used by the Japanese Aboriginal people and means everlasting life. Linguists, however, say the name is from the Yamoto language and refers to Fuji the Buddhist fire goddess. Mount Fuji is the most climbed mountain in the world with over 100,000 people trekking to the summit every year. Unlike many sacred mountains, people make pilgrimage to climb the peak. About 30% of climbers are foreigners with the rest Japanese. It was nice to leave the bustling city of Tokyo and see in person the majestic view of Fujisan. We were lucky to see it before our eyes thanks to the clear sky above us. The gift shop was full of Fuji-themed sweet treats. We went for the most popular snack, 
which was this mochi-like pastry drenched in some kind of sweet sauce. It was tasty and interesting. For some reason, there are rabbits everywhere. I don't even know what it means. Lover boy, uh, Dominic here. Trying to get cute. Going down. Instead of taking the gondola down, we decided it would be nice to hike the trail back down to Lake Kawaguchiko, where our car was parked. After the Vista Point, it was time for lunch. We picked the most interesting piece of architecture on the valley floor. Hotofuro looks like a giant igloo. What a trip. They specialize in this fat udon-like noodles, served in these huge stone bowls. The taste was amazing. <laughs> On our way to the ice cave at the base of Mount Fuji. Lava rocks on the floor. Remnants of a volcano blast. So this is the suicide board preventing suicide. The trail ascends through what is known as the suicide forest. Some people might get creeped out about stuff like this. For me, it was nothing more than a hike in the forest. Parents, uh -huh, parents. brothers, brothers, sisters. You, uh, oh, think about your old, the time yeah. again with so. your family. Ice cave. We're going to go into the ice cave. Here's a little diorama map, 3D map of the ice cave that we're going to go into. This used to be one gigantic uh, lake, yeah, lake, river, oh. lake, and then it, after, the, after Mount Fuji lava. exploded, the lava separated oh. into five lakes. Oh. Yeah, now it's five. About to enter the ice cave in Mount Fuji. After 30 minutes of hiking, we finally reached the ice cave. As some of you might know, I love all this nature stuff, so I was eager to go inside. Boy, was it cold. The temperature was 37 degrees Fahrenheit, and it stays at this temperature all year round. The cave was once used as a natural refrigerator for silkworm eggs. The sakura tree is native to Japan. Every spring, it blossoms into beautiful pink flowers. It is used in many ways and symbolizes the Japanese culture. We've all seen this in movies, but never in real life. Life in Japan is about efficiency and utilizing space. This parking machine is a direct result of Japanese ingenuity. We're at the Takashimaya Times Square Mall, and let me tell you, this place has everything. After our tasty lunch, we were ready for dessert. There was an entire floor in the mall with nothing but desserts. I mean, all kinds of delicious treats. It was nuts. These are like the most perfect strawberries ever. Look at these strawberries. They are perfect. Holy moly. I was fascinated with Japanese strawberries. They were all neatly packed, all the same size, perfectly plumped red and not a speck of dirt on them. It doesn't get any better than this. And yeah, they taste as good as they look. The most convenient parking system ever. Put your ticket in a machine, pay the fee, and bam, your car comes out the other end. Awesome.
We were invited to the MotoChamp office, which is located in Shinjuku. The parent company is San E Shobo. They publish over 40 magazine and has been around for about 40 years. Nari, the chief editor of MotoChamp, gave us the tour and went through some ZoomerCon details. Hello. This is Scooter Champ magazine. Comes out only once a year in January. The May 2013 MotoChamp issue will be the 100th anniversary of their U.S.-based photographer, Yu Yamamoto. The ZoomerCon spread will be in its own detachable booklet inside the magazine. On top of that, Yu was at Ruxter shooting two of our latest bikes while I was in Japan. So both these bikes will be featured in the same issue. How sweet is that? Yay! I'm going to put... This is the actual MotoChamp section of, <coughs> of the building. We're going to go eat lunch with the MotoChamp team. Say hello! Yay! <laughs> Yeah, these are Honda PCX scooters, very new to the market. So I'm on a Honda PCX um, 150cc and I want to show you, I guess in Japan they have this idling stop, come over here. So when you're at a light and you stop your scooter, the engine shuts off. When the light turns green, you just go, and it turns back on. <laughs> Very eco-friendly and efficient. That's cool. Next stop, Moon Eyes, Japan. The purpose of our visit was to personally give Shige, the owner, a copy of the Rafu Shimpo, Los Angeles Japanese newspaper, which featured the Moon Eyes open house event at their U.S. location. But he wasn't there the day we went, so we gave the gift bag to an employee, ate lunch at the Moon Eyes Cafe, and called it a day. Shige emailed us the following day and thanked us for the kind gesture. I talked to Shige one time and he told me, Japan is the only Asian country that is interested in the American hot rods. With every great story, there's a greater ending. My two weeks in Japan was a real eye-opener. Everything I experienced was so unlike what I'm used to. The digital toilets with heated seats, the sublime taste of fresh sushi, the level of customer service, the efficiency of the subway system, and of course, the badass Zoomers. Me and behalf of Ruxtures came to Japan and united the entire Zoomer community into one place bringing not only the riders together, but the shops as well. We all joined forces to create the first ZoomerCon ever, and it was a huge success. Mission accomplished. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs>